The 2007 college football season was one of the strangest years we have ever seen. To start, if we take a look at the final AP poll, we see teams like Boston College, Virginia Tech, and Kansas in the top 10, which is extremely hard to fathom today. Another crazy thing is that there were so many upsets on big teams that the national champions that year, LSU, actually had two losses. But as crazy as those things are, the team we will be looking at closely during this 2007 season are the Missouri Tigers, who ended the year being ranked fourth in the final AP poll. This is a program that has shown tiny glimpses of success in the recent past, uh, but is not known as a football powerhouse. In the past 10 years, they have only reached double-digit wins twice, and although that is definitely an accomplishment, especially in the SEC, since the 2015 season, they've kind of plateaued and are now average at best. But before their move to the SEC, they had one magical season in 2007, and that is what we will be talking about in this video. So let's get into it. Going into the 2007 season, they were coming off a mediocre 2006 year. And this was before they moved to the SEC, so with a final record of 8-5 and five overall and 4-4 four and four in conference play, they didn't suck, but no one could have guessed what would have happened in this 2007 season. If we look at some key players on this team, the first one that grabs my attention is Chase Daniels. This dude actually had a really, really good college career, and even though this season would be his best from a team aspect, it wasn't even his best statistically. So I'll highlight his career stats later, but looking at his numbers, I feel that he was pretty underrated. Another guy was Jeremy Macklin, who was the team's leading receiver and the second leading rusher on the team. A great offensive weapon for the Tigers, and it's good that they found two different ways to get him the ball. Along with his receiving and rushing numbers, he was also the return specialist and had over 1,300 return yards on the year. On the defensive side, they had three guys with over 100 tackles. Sean Witherspoon, William Moore, and Brock Christopher were those three guys, and I'll go over exact stats after we've covered how the season went. But those five guys I mentioned were a massive catalyst to the team's success, as you'll see. Going into the year, they were not ranked, as you'd probably think, because the previous season, they were average. Their strength of schedule was not incredibly hard, but out of the 14 games they played that year, six of them were ranked, so it wasn't a sleeper of a schedule. Once they started the season, it was evident that their team's success stemmed from their offense. They averaged 40 points a game, and that alone allowed them to contend with any team in the country. They started off the season great, and by week six, they were ranked 11th. What's crazy about that is that they were unranked for the first three weeks of the season. Week three, they were unranked. Week four, they were ranked 25th. Week five, they jumped to 17th. And then in week six is when they got that 11th spot. So to go from unranked to a nearly top 10 team in that time span is super impressive. The craziness of the 2007 season definitely had something to do with that. There were just so many upsets that year, which helped them climb the rankings so fast. But that's not to say that they didn't deserve it. Going into week six, they were set to play number six Oklahoma in Norman, which was by far their biggest game of the year. This was the game that would show everyone if they were for real or not, because besides this game, they played other ranked opponents in the regular season, but they were 22 and 25, so they had other good opponents, but this game against Oklahoma was pretty much uh, it for proving their worth. Throughout the game, they hung in with the Sooners and going into the fourth quarter, they had a one point lead. But unfortunately, they were outplayed in the fourth quarter and the final score ended up being 41 to 31. So although they did end up losing, the fact that they kept it close and hung with Oklahoma the whole game hurt them much less than like a blowout loss. They only went down four spots in the rankings, so it could have been much worse for them. The next week, they responded really well to that loss by beating 22nd ranked Texas Tech pretty convincingly 41 to 10. The next few weeks, Missouri showed out and went on a four-game win streak. Going into week 12, they were ranked number three in the country and were fixing to play in the biggest game of possibly the whole 2007 season against none other than the Kansas Jayhawks, who were also ranked number two and undefeated going into this game which in itself is another crazy randomly good season by a less than mediocre team, but we're talking about Missouri in this video. What's crazy about this game is not only did it mean a lot for both teams in terms of rankings, but it was also a huge rivalry game known as the Border War. So needless to say, there was a lot on the line 
going into this game. There was no better game to play your best, and Missouri did just that. They not only won the game, but were in control practically the whole time, with the exception of Kansas's attempt at a last minute fourth quarter comeback. The final score was 36-28, and with this win, Missouri was granted the number one ranking in the AP poll. They also earned a spot to the Big 12 championship game against the team that had given them their only loss of the season, the Oklahoma Sooners. And I'm not sure what it was about this team, but even with a second shot against them, the Tigers could still not defeat them. At halftime of the game, the score was 14-14, so once again, they hung with this team. But this game was different from the first game because Oklahoma were now the underdogs. So the argument of this team hung with them didn't really apply anymore because Missouri was expected to win. Oklahoma completely outplayed them in the second half and the final score was 38 to 17. What's unfortunate is that if they would have won that game, they would have gone to the national championship and if they would have won that game, this season would be one of the most talked about ever. Sadly, that was not the reality, but nonetheless, it was still a great season for the Tigers. They finished out the year strong with a big win over Arkansas in the Cotton Bowl. Some notable statistical performances on the year were Chase Daniels, who ended with 4,306 passing yards and 33 touchdowns. Jeremy Macklin, who had 80 receptions for 1,055 yards and 9 touchdowns, along with 51 carries for 375 yards and 4 rushing touchdowns. I mentioned this earlier, but he also had those 1,300 return yards and three return touchdowns. So this dude provided a lot of offensive production for this team. On the other side of the ball, William Moore had a great season with 115 total tackles and eight interceptions. There was also Sean Witherspoon, who led the team in total tackles with 127 and added to that with three sacks, eight pass deflections, and two forced fumbles. So when we look at this year for Missouri, although it didn't have the storybook ending, it actually did help the whole program in a big way. Before this 2007 season, the only other double digit win season that Missouri had had was all the way back in 1960. And that's it. In the entire history of this football program, they had had two double digit win seasons at the conclusion of the 2007 year. But like I said, it helped the program in a big way because they saw a level of success that they had never had in the late 2000s, early 2010s. They followed the 2007 season with another 10 win year in 2008 and then had another one in 2010. 2012 is when they moved to the SEC and in the 2013 and 2014 season, they made it to back-to-back -back SEC championship games and in that span had a record of 23-5 which is extremely impressive. Since that 2014 year, they have been nothing more than average, but there's no doubt that that 2007 season catapulted them into the success that they saw in their stint in the Big 12 and early into their stint in the SEC. This is kind of random, but I mentioned Chase Daniels having a great career at Missouri, and I thought it was worth mentioning. He finished his collegiate career with 12,515 yards and 101 touchdowns but he also had 41 interceptions, so a nearly two to one touchdown to interception ratio is not exactly ideal for a great quarterback, and I'm guessing is the reason why he's not really talked about. Uh, but along with his stats, he finished his career with two back-to-back double-digit win seasons, so I'm glad he was able to accomplish that. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If y'all enjoyed it, make sure to like and share it as that helps the channel to grow. Besides that, until next time.